Well, thanks everyone for connecting today. And um, as as uh, as you know, this is part of a series of uh, tutorials um, around uh, workflows for uh, petroleum engineers and geoscientists, um, or in general for uh, oil and gas workflows. As as uh, we continue expanding the tutorials. Um, my name is uh, Alejandro Primera, and uh, usually these sessions are sponsored by Primera Resources and OpenSIM Technology. Um, I'm going to be talking today, um, just uh, as, as a reminder of uh, the available resources uh, that we have uh, in the community. Um, the Slack community, it's there. I, I need to be a bit more uh, uh, active distributing some of the videos and, and the codes that we are uh, um, that we are producing in every session. So I'll be doing I will be doing that. Uh, but the idea is that anyone can go there and share any material that uh, you would like to share in the in the groups in the channels that are that have uh, been open in in the Slack group. So also the the, the GitHub repository is available uh, under Orca Hub. So most of the codes uh, that we show here are shared there. And, um, as, and as you know, there is a, a YouTube channel is available, uh, which is a Orca Hub YouTube channel. And as we move forward, Orca Hub, uh, it's also meant to, to have uh, a bit um, more tutorials beyond, um, beyond oil and gas as well. So that's why we've done a couple of uh, sessions on geothermal. So the agenda for today, um, last week I put together a, a tutorial, a rather convoluted tutorial on, on Dash Plotly, and uh, I'm going to wrap that up. And uh, hopefully I will explain um, also what some of the steps that I was doing in that tutorial last time, and uh, probably uh, and hopefully it will make it will be more clear why I was making certain certain things. And um, and the other the other part that I will I will I'm aiming to do is uh, an automated generation of Eclipse schedule files. And um, this is more related to simulation, but uh, although it's uh, related to simulation, it's a good example on how to work uh, um, uh, reading Excel's, uh, opening files, replacing things on, on files, creating new files, and so on, um, in an automated uh, fashion way. And uh, I think uh, regardless of, uh, of example that I have picked, uh, it, I think it's a good example for, in terms of um, a good example, of, a good Python example on how to work with pandas and how to work with uh, ASCII files. Right, so uh, as a reminder from, from the um, last session, um, we have uh, a simulation workflow based in the SP1 benchmarking model. And the simulation workflow was uh, um, pretty much uh, established already. I didn't go through these cases. In fact, I have gone through all these uh, steps in previous sessions. But I was focusing on actually bringing the, the data into a dashboard using Dash uh, by Plotly. Um, we have some uncertainties, and the idea was to understand the the, um, the effect of these uncertainties on the simulation results. So the results were are um, pretty much safe in in OpenSim uh, in a in a PostgreSQL database. They were running OpenSim technology simulator, and uh, and the uncertainties, this, uh, uh, the uncertainty matrix uh, where we change all these variables, it's actually stored in an Excel. So we have two data sources here. And the idea was to uh, combine these couple of data sources into a, into a dashboard and come up with something like uh, what you see here. And let me bring this to the front. And uh, it's, a, it's a dashboard where we could select uh, um, the vector that we would like to see from the simulation results. And, uh, but we also have some uh, flexibility to do a cross plot of the sensitivity variables. 
and to select, uh, select uh, from the sensitivity variables and plot uh, the simulation results. Um, I'm going to try to reproduce uh, as much as I can, probably up to this couple of plots and the interactivity, because that's a, that's the main purpose of, of uh, discussion. Uh, before, before I move forward, uh, let me remind you a bit uh, from the last session as well that we have uh, some tables in a, in a PostgreSQL database. And this, these are the tables, and this is probably where it was confusing. We have two, two key tables. And uh, one of the tables, it's the one on the left, where you see a definition table ID, and you see some code there. You see the name of the case, and you see a date, description, and path. And uh, the other table, uh, you see the simulation results, the quantity, and the values, and you see uh, the same definition table ID. This definition table ID, it's a, uh, I, I believe it's what it's called a uh, unique uh, uh, identifier, a UUID. So, and, and this is very common on databases. And what you would find is that uh, the, the multiple tables, the, you have multiple tables that they are referenced by, uh, by a single ID. So what I mean in this case is, uh, as you can see, this is a case, a uh, simulation case 120. And, uh, but, uh, but on this table, I don't, I don't see the simulation case 120. What I see is uh, this uh, long code this UUID, which is 9E4B6ED, and whatever, all that long code. And, and I see that that code, it's repeated several times on this table. So why? Because there are uh, multiple simulation results stored on this table. And um, there was one question on the last session, and um, uh, why valid? Can we do this in, in Power BI? And the answer is uh, probably not, um, because uh, because uh, in Power BI, uh, you you will need to organize all the simulation results in columns. And as you know, um, and or, or I don't know if you're aware, but uh, the, all every simulation result may have a different amount of uh, vectors and different amount of time steps. So that is quite challenging for a database. And in fact, that's the first thing that I try to add a cop to our columns for every one of those vectors. And, uh, and then add, uh, the, the, for instance, in this case, I have uh, um, gas injection, uh, gas injection, bottom hole pressure. So I could have columns of those. But because I was working with so many simulation cases, it was super inefficient. So that's why we move into this direction of storing all the simulation results in one row uh, with a quantity or the name of a vector. So in this case, I can add as many vectors as I want. So let's say I, I run another simulation case where I have five wells. Uh, it does. It, it no, there is no problem on adding uh, five more wells with their quantities uh, in this with this format. But if I would use a neat an, a neat format or I would use a, a different format, that would cause a trouble um, in terms of database storage. Hopefully, hopefully that will that is clear. And um, and even if I store it in a neat format, uh, which is. Um, could be another option. The problem is that it's a lot of data. It's really a lot of data. Usually these simulation results, uh, they could be running um, with time step of three days, but uh, if you have convergence issues and if you're not controlling well your time stepping, then um, the simulation steps might be very small. So you can, you can end up with time series that are extremely long and, uh, and heavy. Um, so uh, starting from this point, let me move into the, into the exercise uh, of, of today. Let's, let's see where we ended up. Actually, we were using a PyCharm. 
Let me move by charm here. And uh, the last dashboard that we end up with was uh, the simulation dashboard. If I run that dashboard, let me run this dashboard. And, and uh, okay. So what we have is uh, oh, this is not this is the one that we are going to uh, achieve at the end of the session. Let me rerun this. Uh, yeah. A very simple dashboard, I could select the vector and then, oh, this is not the one. I could select the, the simulation results at the end. Um, I'm not quite sure if that is, this is the one, let me see. Oh, this was the one, the, the one that we use for the session. Second. Um, okay, yeah. So we were using this this dashboard, and and just a, a bit of a reminder: what we were doing the last time, uh, we have uh, we define for whole layout of our app with uh, some drop downs where we selected the, the simulation cases and we selected the vectors. And, uh, and then we define the logic of uh, uh, what we were going to, to plot. So I, I just would like to get up to the point that we left last time. And then, and then I'm going to expand on this, uh, on this same case. See? All right, here we go. Some problems, we had some problems as well here, but uh, uh, the, the idea was to select uh, the simulation result here, and that's what we produce at the end. So we have a, the, for the well plot, we have a gas oil ratio. We could select the cumulative gas production for that well. And we could select the simu uh, several simulation case and add, the, add them to the mix. And, uh, but we would like to add more. We would like to add uh, another plot here. And we would like to add a couple of more drop downs to, uh, to the dashboard. Okay, so I'm going to stop uh, this uh, dashboard for the time being. And um, I'm going to make a copy of this uh, simulation dashboard session. And I'm going to call it uh, session, uh, session two. Okay. Right. So this uh, dashboard session two, and as uh, as you can as you can see, it was very simple. We have a layout, and this layout uh, has uh, a. It consists of one HTML, which uh, has. Uh, the name, the simulation name here at the top, and then the drop downs. So I'm going to split this, and I'm going to have a, like um, like in the presentation. We want to have two plots. 
We want to have two plots and two sets of drop downs. Let's see if we can achieve that. Uh, the one thing that um, that I'm going to take advantage of, of it's a uh, uh, a CCS styling. So uh, let me let me um, let me let me go one step back and uh, talk about styling. So usually this uh, uh, dashboard. Uh, it's uh, you, you can add the um, uh, uh, um, a styling, uh, 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 an HTML styling, so that you can split the things into different uh, into different columns, into different rows, or we can put a particular style to the fonts or a particular um, styles to the table. Any 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 um, of anything that we are adding uh, really to the um, to the dashboard. So there is something called uh, the external uh, styling in, in the app. Let me... Just one second. Right, so I'm going to use a styling. Uh, there is um, something called Bootstrap, Bootstrap CCS, and um, I like Bootstrap because I can I can divide my website or or the, what I what I want to see in in grid. So they have there is a grid system, and the grid system works in this way. I can add a row, and I can split the row in multiple columns. And then I can put in every column, I can put whatever I want. I can put a drop down, I can put a, a, an image, I can put a table, um, anything that I would like to, to, to add. And, and really, uh, if you see the code, the coding HTML, or um, this is HTML code, uh, the way it works is uh, it, uh, you, you have to add a class that defines whether, so for instance, in this case, I have a row, this whole thing is a row. And uh, this is telling me that there is a, a, I'm going to add a column and I can add up to two, up to 12 columns or I can divide this in uh, items. For instance, this is eight plus four. I can use a whole 12, uh, 12 the space of the whole row the splitting 12 uh, spaces and, uh, and then um, generate columns that ultimately they, they should add up to 12. So in this case, it's eight plus four is 12, four plus four plus four is 12, six plus six is 12. And this is what you see here. So this is, uh, this is column one, this is column two, this is column three, and this is column um, or row, row, row one, two, three, and four. And in this case, in the row four, there are uh, two columns with uh, uh, six, uh, six uh, spacements for every every column. The, the nice thing about this is that if you publish your dashboard um, uh, in, in your company or ultimately someone can have a look uh, at the dashboard even in the mobile, when, when they resize the windows, the, the dashboard will uh, resize automatically. And uh, we'll, we'll give it a try at the end. But uh, more or less, that's a logic, and the way the way that logic works is uh, I need to add the that st styling uh, uh, sheet in 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 dash, and uh, let me copy the uh, styling sheet. This is a, a styling sheet. So this is calling a bootstrap and it's uh, bringing the CSS styling. And uh, in the app, I can, I can specify, when I call the app, I can specify the external, external sheets, style sheets. It's equal to this. I can add more, but for the time being, I'm just going to use CSS. And uh, the, the beauty of that is that uh, let, let's say I want to add uh, uh, 
uh, one division of uh, withdrawals. Okay, I'm going to add another HTML here uh, with a div. And in that div, I would like to add, um, I would like to add a, a, a separate divs. So the way I can do the way that let's say this is my uh, in this uh, in this case this will be my row, and I will I would define a couple of columns inside that row, similar to what I'm what I was doing here, where I have a row and inside the row I define multiple columns with the format that I want. So I'm going to do that. And uh, the way I can do it is uh, use a class name. And this class name is referred to uh, the CSS class. And in this case, um, we know that the class that we want to use is row. Okay. Let's see again here. So we're going to use a class row. And then we have to use a class this class will define how we want to split the, the columns inside our row. And if I, I have for, for the time being, I have uh, one row. Let's put two divs inside. I'm going to put a couple of divs here. So the first div will have a class name of column MD6, I'm a row, and the second as well. So I'm going to have inside that row, inside that row, I'm going to have a couple of columns. So if I run that, so this is uh, already a cla uh, the dashboard too. So if I run that dashboard too, let's see if that works. Okay, nothing has happened yet because I don't have anything specified. But let's assume that for the time being, I want to put these two drop downs inside these uh, uh, dividers. So I can copy from here, paste it in here, put some order so it actually it's more readable. I'm going to put it in here. Okay, so I have my my first uh, div and my second. I'm going to put. I'm going to move this uh, second drop down inside this div. Okay. Um, there we go. I'm going to save it again. So, because I'm running on a on a server, when I do when if I implement a change, this should be actually uh, be responding automatically. Although I don't see that this is being doing anything. Let's see. Let's restart this. Okay. Hmm. For some reason, it's not dividing the. Let's see. I'm using the session two. Perfect. This is this simulation dashboard session two. I'm adding the styling. And this is running the simulation dashboard session two. Oh, um, and I have added the row. Probably the only thing that it's uh, uh, strange is that, no, that graph is outside. Perfect. 
probably needed a refresh, let's see. Okay, here we go. So now we have a couple, the, the, um, the couple of rows here. And I believe is uh, one thing that may happen is that you see as, as I collapse uh, the website, the dashboard, this actually resizes. So instead of uh, a purely overlapping both uh, drop downs or uh, struggling to place uh, drop downs, it automatically uh, restyle the website. So I have or the dashboard, so I have the drop downs uh, aligned. But if I open it more, then you see that I have uh, um, a nicer uh, look. Okay. So there are a few things that you can do with the classes uh, of uh, Bootstrap, but I'm, I'm not going to go through that. So the, the next thing that I would like to do, it's the same, um, but uh, for uh, the plot. And in fact, uh, um, uh, this actually has to be in this place uh, because I'm going to open another couple of options for the next plot. So these two options refers to the first plot and these other options will control the, uh, the results on the second plot. So what I'm going to do is um, uh, I'm going to move uh, uh, the, this, uh, the, the drop down. And in fact, let me, let me duplicate this uh, Uh, this row, and I'm going to put this drop down inside this uh, uh, divider. So this is where it has to be. So I can put another couple of drop downs inside the, this uh, divider that is in here. So I'm going to create a couple of extra drop downs for the time being. I'm going to name it exactly the same as, uh, as the one above. Uh, the only difference is uh, I'm going to call this uh, drop down three and drop down four. And for the time being, I'm going to use exactly the same drop downs, but I'm going to change the options in a, in a, in a bit. So if I save that, um, Okay, there we go. There we go. Yeah. So we have uh, the we have the split. We have in the same row. We have two drop downs here, two drop downs here. Let's change this drop down in a bit. But for the but, but first, let's split. Uh, let's create another division here and put this plot in, in this side. Okay. So the way I'm going to put that plot in that side, it's again create another HTML. Um, dot div and inside this uh, div I'm going to specify that my class name is um, um, a row I'm going to create another row yes and inside that row I'm going to put two columns one column for the first plot and another column for the second plot And uh, the way I can do this is I'm going to uh, generate another HTML. And this is going to be my class name equals um, called MD6. And uh, I will put something in here. No, uh, and in the second one, I'm going to put uh, another plot. For the time being, let's put only this plot. Okay. Inside the first one and inside the second one, I'm going to leave it empty for the time being. 
Let's see how that looks. Right, there we go. We have one plot here and a couple of drop downs here. And I don't know if you remember from the last time, but uh, uh, we were using the, we were using this Excel, the sensitivities, and we have some variables here. And the idea is that I want to make a plot, for instance, of, uh, this is SP1 physics, yes. I want to make a plot of uh, the select, the options that I have, the structural dipping versus rock compressibility or rock compressibility versus scale or um, any combination of input uh, of input variables. So that later on, I can select the simulation cases from that, uh, from that uh, plot. So similar to what I was showing here in the image, so I want to put a structural dipping versus any other input uh, so that I can, uh, I, I'm, I should be able to see the, the points and then select from the points. That's more or less what we are aiming for. So a bit of a, a more interactivity to the, to the graph. But for this, this dropdown shouldn't be the one referring to the, to the um, simulation results. I want to have a plot of the, um, of the actual, um, of the actual uh, input data from the Excel. And I think from the, the last time, we actually created that drop down here. So we created that. So this is a drop down of the cases names, but there was a drop down too, where we took the case, structural dipping, rock compressibility, scale, gas injection, and mobility rating. Uh, so we have this drop down, and it's called drop down options too. And uh, what we can do is uh, uh, use uh, in here drop downs option two, and in here drop downs option two. And this is not going to be a multiple drop down anymore. And instead of, um, I'm going to put case versus or structural dipping versus uh, rock compressibility. I'm going to put here structural dipping. And let me copy rock compressibility from the options here. Right, let me save this. Uh, let's have a look again at the website. There we go. So still, this is working as expected. Nothing has changed. I can still change the properties here. Uh, and now I have these options here, structural dipping case. Nothing is happening because uh, the only thing that I have specified, it's uh, the, the, the actual name of the labels that we want to, to select, but uh, there, is, there is no action being triggered. Now that, that what we have to do now is specify some actions that we can trigger, right? And uh, if you remember from last time, uh, the, the way in which we specify what would happen when I uh, uh, change uh, things, it's uh, with the callbacks. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, generate a, a callback for, uh, for that secondary uh, plot. So, so this is, this is uh, I'm going to create another callback here. Um, and let me copy this for the timing. Um, I'm going to create a, a graph two. And that graph two, it's going to be affected by the drop down three and the drop down four that we just created by those values. And I'm going to create a function called a, update second plot. That function receives this input and this input. So in this case, it's a value on the selection. So input one and input two. Um, what I'm going to do with that option, uh, if uh, you remember here at the top, we loaded from the, uh, we, with using pandas, we load the Excel, this Excel, into a data frame. So we loaded all that Excel, or or at least that uh, SP1 physics, 
So this spreadsheet with all these uh, all these values into into a data frame. So we have that available. And uh, what I can do is um, say, well, I I want to be able to create a plot. And uh, you remember from the last time uh, from Plotly, somehow I would need to create a figure that has some traces and return that figure, okay? So let's define those traces. So those traces, I can use uh, this trace. Let's use the trace that we used before. And uh, actually I'm going, this is only one trace. This trace uh, would have an X and a Y. So I can use a DF, the data frame input, and um, plot the, the couple of variables, X and Y variables from this table. So I can uh, take raw compressibility or the structural dipping and plot this versus the other. That's what we want to do. So we want to take a DF input and I want to take the input one and I want to take the values here or yeah, values, dot values. And I want to take the input two Um, name, I'm not going to worry about the name at the moment. So uh, this is, I'm going to um, delete this. And I don't want lines because remember from the uh, plot here, what I would like is uh, some scatter data. So what I really need, it's uh, markers. So let's see if that works. Let me run this again because uh, Okay, server seems to be running. Let me go to a, to a dashboard, select something. Okay, nothing is being displayed. And uh, nothing is being displayed because this function is returning a figure uh, on graph two. But graph two doesn't exist yet. So in my, remember there are two parts, the layout and all the callbacks. In the layout, I haven't specified a graph two. I only have a graph one. So I can specify now the graph two. And so now that I have a graph two, whatever this uh, function returns by changing the drop down, when I change the drop down, any of the two drop downs, when I change any of the two drop downs, that function uh, will be triggered and the graph will be updated. Yes. So if I um, if I show you now in here, there we go. We have a case, so I can plot cases versus structural dipping. So all the cases have different levels of a structural dipping. I can plot uh, structural dipping versus compressibility. So I have uh, or case versus compressibility. There are two levels of compressibility and, uh, and so on and so on. So it's really a quick, uh, the, the quickest uh, plot that we, can, we have done so far and coming straight from, from an Excel. But uh, at the moment, this is not linked to this. Yeah, and we want to link this. We want to link uh, both, uh, both plots. Before I do that, uh, one nice uh, thing that you, you have when you're uh, developing in PyCharm is that uh, if I put a breakpoint here, uh, you will notice that, as I mentioned, there are two drop downs, drop downs three and drop down four. This is drop down three and this is drop down four. If I change this, you see how this is triggered, and I can see exactly exactly what is happening every step at a time. So I can I can use uh, F8, which in this case is uh, 
um, step over. So I'm running step by step and I can hover on the date and see what is it that um, Python it's, uh, it's calculating at every time and what, what are the variables that are, that are being calculated. Uh, so that's uh, very useful because uh, that that's that would be very helpful to understand uh, where where the code might might break. So let's uh, I can I can click here and then carry on with my uh, with my analysis. So so far so good. Um, what I'm going to do now it's uh, 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 as you can see if I select something here with the lasso. Nothing is happening, and that's okay because uh, there is no interactivity that I have uh, added between these two plots. But I, I would like to select, uh, let's say, if I if I again go to case, oops, I have a breakpoint here. Let me take the breakpoint and carry on. If I select these cases with my lasso, I should be able to see something here. Okay. Um, now there is uh, um, um, the the first thing that I would like to do, as as you can imagine, I will need another callback, and that callback will be triggered from this plot. So if I select this, I have few simulation cases, the one that you see there um, uh, in the image, and I would like to write those simulation cases into this dropdown because I know that this drop down automatically will update this plot. I hope that makes sense. So in getting to a level of interactivity at a much greater complex level where your dashboard can do really whatever you want to do and whatever interactivity you have. Uh, obviously you have to be careful because uh, uh, you don't want to uh, get into recursive lo loops uh, where you have um, dependencies, interdependencies. Almost when you're working in, in Excel and you're, uh, reference, you're referencing a cell um, that, uh, the, so in the calculation, the cell is referencing itself. So you don't want to get into this, uh, into this kind of things. The only thing that I want to do, this is independent from this, only up to the point that the only connectivity is I, I select this and this uh, drop down, the second drop down uh, will get them the name of the cases. That's that's all. That's all I want. So for that, I'm going to add another uh, callback, and uh, I want to store the selected the selected points, and the selected points. Uh, the the uh, this is uh, in Plotly. And all the interactivity that we have here, it's because we are using Plotly. Um, if we would be using Matplotlib, obviously we don't have, we won't have this hover. We won't be able to do zoom in, zoom out. Uh, we won't be able to do a lot of things that we are able to do with uh, with Plotly. And uh, uh, the one of the things that I'm going to take advantage of is uh, the possibility of uh, getting these points. And the way I'm going to uh, get those points is uh, from a property from the from the graph. So that property from the graph, and um, it's called a selected a selected data. So I know I need a callback somehow. Let me copy this callback, and I would like to output to uh, I would like to store the selected data from the plot. This has a property uh, uh, children, and I will show you why in a second. But uh, whenever I change uh, the, the graph uh, two, so when I select something on the graph two, I want to grab the selected data. Or when the selected data from the graph two uh, uh, changes, I want to get that information uh, back into, uh, back into the, uh, Back so, so from the from the plot. Okay. So now I have only one input. Um, I believe this is this should be fine. And uh, let me call 
a function which is um, is going to um, call store selected data. So this is going to take uh, the selected data. Uh, this this name can be anything. So I'm going to put selected data same, but it can be really anything. And uh, uh, there, there is something else that I need to do, and there is a, a bit of a, a, a game that I need to do with a, with a JSON. Uh, JSON is a format to communicate with uh, more, more or less a, the data that is coming from, from, website, from websites. Uh, but don't worry too much about it. It's, uh, I'll, I'll show you, I'll print the data as it's coming, and you will realize uh, what's happening. Um, so for the time being, I'm going to return Actually, this function, I'm going to return none, just to show you what's happening. And why is this not closing? I need another parenthesis here. So let me print this selected data. But I don't need to print it. I, I just need to put a breakpoint here. And I'll show you what is the selected data. So if I save that, and let's go back to the website. So when I, now if I select some points, let's see what's happening here. Oops, nothing is happening here. Oh, this, I need to create a, a, an output where I'm going to store the data. Uh, this is, a, I'm going to store it temporarily in a, in a hidden part of a website. I don't, I don't want really to show that data around. Um, um, I'm just going to hide it in an HTML in a div. I'm going to put this selected data in a div, but this is not going to be displayed to the user. And, um, Let's see what's happening here. Okay. Okay. Okay, there, there we go. Now it's getting inside. Nothing, it's, it's been, uh, at the moment, this is none because I haven't selected any point. That's fine. Um, but if I if I go back and select something here, what you see here, it's uh, the selected data is printing a bunch of information here, the points and so on. And in fact, if I hover, and you will see what's happening here. So it's printing some points, and inside some inside inside those points, I have. Uh, uh, the curve number, the point number, point index, the case name is here. And, uh, so it means that now I'm getting the case name straight from the selection. And uh, there are two points that I have selected. So I have two, uh, two cases here. Let's carry on and let's, let me select a bit more points. I'm going to select a bit more points from here. And if I hover again, now I have three points that I have selected, three simulation cases. Simulation case zero, simulation case one, and simulation case two. Right, that's uh, fantastic. Now I have the, the I, I know exactly a simulation, for the simulation. Uh, I know I have some information about the, um, the simulation files at the simulation points that I have selected, but I need to extract this, uh, the data from here. Uh, I have a bit of a helper that I'm not going to go to details of uh, what, what is uh, the, the helper doing, but uh, this uh, will help me to extract the actual simulation names and put it in a, in a, in a list. So I'm going to use uh, this uh, small function that you can review later on and uh, which is basically is extracting, uh, going through the file and extracting the data uh, one by one. 
I, I believe that I may not need one of these lines if I'm correct, but well, let me see. So I'm going to use these uh, get simulation names. And uh, so with the selected data, I'm going to try to get the simulation names. And uh, let's, let's call this simulation names equal to this. Let's print the simulation names. In fact, I don't need to print because I have a, a breakpoint. And I'm going to return the simulation names. So now that, that, that output will be a simulation names. Let's see if that works. So if I select here, now I have simulation names and I'm having here the name of the simulation cases that I have selected. Um, uh, that is fantastic. And now I need to make sure that this uh, dropdown is updated with these names of the simulation cases. So, uh, so it, uh, I can automatically can, uh, I can automatically get the names and the plots of these uh, uh, simulation cases here, okay? Hope that makes still making sense. Um, let me continue. So I have the simulation names. And for just a second, I'm, I'm going to unhide because this is a bit of a trick that I put that I make here. I'm going to display uh, the style. I put display on, but uh, if I if I take this out. So you see, it's almost uh, like an internal, I'm using that as, as an internal memory um, in a way. So what would happen is that I'm, I'm actually recording the simulation case in the simulation names in this selected data. So when I do this, Yeah, you see that now the simulation names are printed here. Of course, we don't want that. I just want, I'm just, uh, I just want to have that almost as a, as a memory instance. So when I select the cases, they are in memory. So that's why this, uh, this, is, this style, this display is known. I don't want to display that. I just want to store that in a selected data ID so that I can use later on. And, uh, and as you can imagine, uh, the last point of, uh, or the last step will be to connect the selected data with uh, this uh, dropdown. So in this case, let's copy this code back again. And in this case, I want the output would be the drop down to. Yes, the output would be the drop down to where I have the cases names. So I'm going to put here a, a drop down to. And this is uh, now I want to pass the, the values. I want to uh, store here the value, pass the value. And uh, the graph, uh, uh, um, uh, the input now will be the selected data. And selected data Oops, that's fine. That's fine because I'm writing the code and the, the it's trying to refresh everything while I'm writing, but let me let me kill it for the time being. Uh, selected data as uh, it's just children. Children, it's the information that is inside. And what I want with this is the F update a list same cases in the drop down. So I'm going to pass uh, the the input, this input that I can call whatever I want for it. I mean, I'm going to call it selected, selected cases. I'm 
went to college selected cases. And uh, uh, really what this is going to return, it's uh, those uh, selected cases. Yeah, that's very, very simple. So if I change, if somehow those selected cases are changes, change, then they have to be passed straight away into the uh, drop down. Uh, let's see if that works. Okay, that seems to be up and running. Now, if I select a case here, it's still updating. If I select a case uh, here, you see that these cases now are changing. Right, so it's very nice because now I can select based on the variables. Now I can, uh, let's say I want to do a plot of rock compressibility versus structural dipping. And I want to take all the values that has a high rock compressibility and high structural dipping. So I can select all these points here. There are many points here, which are all those cases. And um, it's going to take a bit of time to refresh because these are time series um, being uh, actually pulled from the database. But you can see that now I'm bringing all the data, all the results uh, from those cases uh, into a into a dashboard. So if I select another set of points, and uh, the, the the dashboard, uh, this is a this is a very nice example because it has a, a quite few quite few complexities. At uh, first. We are uh, we're bringing complex data from the database. Uh, second, we are uh, uh, trying to match the data from the database with different rows with a unique identifier, and also match it to Excel with the input data. And it is, um, as I was discussing with someone said the other day, usually the data is not perfect, and you have to make sure that you work around the data. So that that also features that. Uh, if this is something that you won't be able to do in Power BI because the time series are quite heavy and, um, and uh, it's, it's a lot of data. In this case, I'm actually just bringing to a dashboard the data that I need. And if I show you the, I'm not going to do the whole dashboard that I had prepared before, but, uh, but if I show you the um, dashboard, um, that ultimately you can bring, you can build almost as uh, thinking about ideas of what you could be doing with, with this. I think it's, this is the one. No. No, I don't think I have it in here. It's somewhere else. But uh, the dashboard would look uh, something like, uh, like this. So one of the ideas that, uh, that uh, I had at the time was uh, that I could color the, the cases based on the properties as well. And the other thing that, I, that you could do with Dash, it's at a table here. So when you select the data, uh, these tables are actually dynamically updated as well. So the, the, the only values that are shown here on this uh, table are the ones from the selected cases. So quite a few things that you could do with Dash and uh, also using the HTML styling or the CSS, the CCS, uh, uh, CCS, CSS styling. You can do quite a few things uh, with uh, how you want to organize uh, the dashboard, justify your data, put margins. So that it, it, can, it, can, it can be quite, um, it, can, it can be quite complete in terms of uh, how you want to ultimately show, put your dashboard together. Uh, of course, it's a lot of uh, more work uh, than if you have Power BI. Uh, but again, this has much more benefits. And uh, one of the benefits is uh, uh, you, can, you can do calculations on the background with Python. It's not only just pulling and, pulling and, uh, and calculating or pulling and, and matching data from databases and, and different data sources. You can actually be doing 
um, uh, um, a calculation in the background, like a decline curve analysis, change uh, change something with a decline curve analysis, and and see under your dashboard what what is the effect. That is uh, one of the advantage of of uh, plugin dash, and uh, and it's it's quite quite flexible. You can publish it and uh, and share with uh, with with your team, and there is no need for for a license. Uh, there is no need to pay for a license.